Bye. Hey everybody, Shane Simpson back with you here from Guitar at Work. Welcome. Uh, this is something completely different today. As you can see, I'm on electric. You can absolutely do what we're doing here today on your acoustic guitar, just a little easier here on the electric. A lot of requests for some lead guitar stuff, and this is one of the most useful concepts to me that uh, you're going to find out there for sure. Um, these are called Sixth in the Key of G, and I've got a backing track already laid down there in my loop station, um, the first verse of Lion Eyes, just to give us something to play over. Um, it's, it's in the key of G, so it's going to use chords from the key of G. We'll talk a whole lot more about that. Uh, but anyway, Anyway, thank you for requests and for subscribing, for thumbs up. It's been a lot of fun to hear from so many of you, um, especially recently. We've added a whole lot of uh, videos just recently. Um, so do yourself a favor, as always, head to shanesimpson.com, grab this sheet. It's called Sixth in the Key of G. And what's going to happen here, we've got little circle areas. We'll be talking about those. Uh, we've basically got the G scale going on. And there's only two possible shapes here. Two possible shapes. We'll get you going right away. Um, I'm going to play the open G string. And I'm going to walk up that string with my first finger. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. So uh, you may have remember from high school music or something, that's a major scale. So let me do that again. I'm going to call out the fret numbers here. Open, open string, G. Here's your second fret. Fourth fret. Fifth fret. Seventh. Ninth. Eleventh. And twelfth. I'll even go up higher. I'll go fourteen. And we're up to 16. You can reach that even if you're on an acoustic guitar, you're fine. So that's the, the G major scale on the G string. Now on the high E string, we're going to skip a, skip the B string, go right to the high E. High E open, then 2nd fret, then 3rd fret, 5th fret, 7th fret, 8th fret, 10th fret, 12, 14, and 15. Good. So what we do is we put those together, okay? So you're going to see those on that little neck map that you've downloaded, and you're going to see some circles indicating shapes. The first shape is this guy here, open G and high E. I'm going to play them separately, as you can tell. I'm going to go down stroke on the G string, open, and up stroke on the high E string, like that. There we go. Playing them individually. And now this guy here, there's only two possible fingerings. I'm going to go to the second fret on the G string, and then second fret on the high E. There we go. Let's call that a parallel fingering because your fingers are on the same fret. They're on the second fret of the G and the second fret of the high E there. Boom. There we go. That's shape number two. The next one is B and G. So that's going to be fourth fret on the G string and third fret here on the high E. There we go. Let's call that a split fingering because you're not on the same fret there, okay? And those are the only two possible shapes. Then we just have to know where they are as we move up the neck like that. Starting from the top again. Open G and a high E string. And here's your second fret. And second fret is your parallel shape, and that's gonna. I'm gonna drag my middle finger up like that, and then go to the third fret of that high E. That's your second shape there. Notice your middle finger is not gonna move. He's just gonna be dragged up like that. There you go. So open G, second fret, second fret, and then fourth fret, third fret. That's your split fingering. Now it's gonna return to the parallel fingering here on the fifth fret. That's cool. That's a C and an A, and then here we go. Two frets higher is a parallel fingering again. Always a good idea to go back and just memorize them as you go. I'll start right from the top again. Open G, high E open, and then second fret, to parallel fingering. Fourth fret, third fret. Fifth fret, fifth fret. Seven and seven. Nine and eight. And now we're moving along. That's your split finger. And now split finger again, two frets higher. Eleven and ten. And then a parallel shape here based on the twelfth. There we go. So we got 12 frets so far. Let's go right from the top again. Open G, high E. Second fret, parallel finger. Fourth fret, split finger. Fifth fret, parallel. Seventh parallel. And middle is a split finger. And there we go. Ninth fret. And here's 11. 12 and 12 here. Parallel. And you can reach it. I'm going to go 14 and 14. Again, middle. That's middle and third fingers. The fingering is really important for this. And I'm going to finish it off here with 16 and 15. There we go. Yeah, so again, I'll reiterate, the fingering is really, really important for this. We're going to be moving along pretty quickly. You want the most economical fingering you can have. So that's a really, really good one. So you notice your second finger has always been on the G string. And then it's either your first finger, if it's a split finger, or it's a, your third finger if it's a parallel fingering for that. So you may have to stop tape right there. Remember to go backwards too, right? I'm going to start way out uh, where we did 16 and 15. I'm going to go backwards, 16, 15, 14, 14, 
12 and 12, here's 11 and 10, 9 and 8, 7 and 7, 5 and 5, 4 and 3, 2 and 2, and then open. There you go. So again, those shapes are circled on your sheet. Go grab that. Again, there's nothing to sign up for anything like that. Go grab that. It's a good reference uh, paper for sure. And those shapes are circled. So you may have to stop tape there and get to know them. That's perfectly reasonable. Get to know them, practice them. Try to use the dots to your advantage. Maybe at least it gives you some landmarks as to where those shapes occur. Uh, in different keys, they're going to be the same shapes, but they're going to be in different places. So we're getting a head start on other keys by doing this as well. Um, now, I'm going to put the old loop station on here, the Beat Buddies on. And uh, I've just, as I said, I put the chorus to like the first verse of Lion Eyes, which is G, G major 7, C. If you don't know how to play that, there is a video for that as well. And it just gives us something to play over. That song is in the key of G, so it's perfect for this uh, particular concept. And I'm just going to literally walk up our shapes as we did them just a moment ago. But you're hearing them against the chords of the moment. So here it comes, really slowly. Open, second fret, four, fifth fret, seventh, ninth, 11, 10, and I'm gonna go backwards. That sounded great. There we go. One. I'm gonna go backward again. So it sounds very, very musical, instantly musical. And uh, again, you might miss some notes here and there, but that's okay. Just keep on moving. And I'll tell you, uh, it takes three notes to be considered a chord. So this is called an interval. And these are this interval is the sixth. It's a sixth apart. So each note is a sixth apart in the scale. If that makes no sense to you, that's okay. We're going to do a whole series on that kind of thing. Just know that the interval is a sixth. So they're not quite chords. They're called intervals. Uh, but they do imply chords. So if you find it, hey, it sounds that particular shape doesn't sound very good over that G chord. You may, you, you trust your ears, you're probably right. And what you do is just keep on moving until you find one that you want to stop on that sounds good with the chord of the moment. Uh, that's a really you know, important skill. That's why we want to play it over top of chord changes so you get the hang of that quick, sooner rather than later. Um, so those are sixth key of G. Now I'm just going to monkey around a little bit and this time I'm going to put a slide in so you can see where the work is. You got to get to know those shapes, move them up the neck. Um, I'm going to add some slides. I'm going to start here on the fourth fret. Oops, what's going on here now? Whoop, we're good. I'm going to start here on the fourth fret, like that. Fourth and third. I'm calling, when I call out numbers, I'm typically calling out the notes on the G string. So, fourth and third. And I'm going to take that middle finger, I'm going to pick them and slide them up. And then add the note on the fifth fret. So, for our parallel fingering. So, again, I'll go back to the other guy. Play that shape and then slide up. I'm going to slide this guy up again. Slide, pick and slide again. There we go again, and and you can see we're going. I'll go backwards as well. There we go. Cool. So I'll try to add that in as well. Just a little more stylish, maybe. So here it comes from the top here. Just goofing around. Two, three, four. Go up and I like that note, so I stopped. Hanging out. I like it. Two, three. There we go. Keep on moving. ton of fun to play. And uh, I guess uh, the best word I could call it uh, is sure-footed. You get sure-footed and you kind of know. I happen to know those chord changes fairly well. They're kind of tattooed on my head. So uh, I know where it's going. It does help to know what the chords are in there to give you some idea. And just fool around with it. It'll build your instinct for sure. And uh, anyway, we're getting a head start with other keys as well. And thanks a lot for all the requests for lead guitar stuff. We've got a whole bunch of electric guitar com things coming. But again, you can do that on the acoustic. It's just as effective on the acoustic. So have fun with it. If you have questions, let me know. Meet me down in the comments section. Thanks a lot 
Spark guys, thumbs up is super important in YouTube land. And I've gotten a lot of those. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, keep your comments coming and suggestions. Always happy to look at them. We'll see you again very soon. Cheers. One, two.